Okay. Hi guys, my name is Christine Lee. Welcome back to my channel. Um, and today I'm going to be doing a very interesting video. One that has been very highly requested. And that is my stats. I was really hesitant to make this video for quite a while just because I felt like it was really private information. I don't know, I wasn't like the most comfortable with sharing it. The two big reasons why I decided to share it was because one, I also wanted to share some tips that I feel would maybe be more useful than just knowing another person's stats, you know, like test scores and grades. And also the fact that I used to watch these videos a lot too when I was, you know, applying for college and watching those kinds of college YouTubers and stuff like that. Um, so this is, I guess, my way of giving back. Hopefully you guys can remember to take this with a grain of salt though, um, just because, you know, this is just my, oops, it wasn't in focus there. This is just my information and you know, there's only so much you can do with knowing another person's information. Uh, just keep that in mind. So I guess just to start off with some of the basics, I did go to a public high school, not a private high school. Um, contrary to somewhat, uh, some of the things that other people seem to believe, I went to a public high school and um, there were around 720 or so people in my class and we actually only have 10th through 12th grade at my high school. Uh, 9th grade is with the junior high and we don't have class rank. I do know that my final GPA on a 4.0 scale was 4.6443. So that was a result of me taking like AP classes and honors classes and such. So for my grades, I will be putting right here my class schedule. So this is my class schedule for the ninth grade. And I got mostly A's um, and A minus here and there and also A pluses. I won't be saying the grades out loud because it'll be written there, but I will just quickly run through the classes. I took English 9 honors, uh, US History 1 honors, Biology honors, Algebra 2 honors, Spanish 4 honors, Graphic Design, Financial Literacy, Advanced Orchestra, Physical Education, and Health. And then for our sophomore year, this was my schedule as well. So this is just a list of all the classes that I took and the final grades that I got in those classes. So I took American Literature Honors, World History Honors, Institute for Political Education 1 Honors, or IPL, that's um, a government class at my school. International Studies was just another name for Model UN. Model UN was a class at my school, so I took it both semesters. Chemistry Honors, Pre-Calculus Honors, Spanish 5 Honors, Orchestra, Private Music Lessons. I was able to apply for uh, actual class credits if I took music lessons at home. And driver's education and physical education. So yeah, those are all the classes that I took for my sophomore year. Then for the 11th grade, my junior year, this is my class schedule again. So I took AP English 1, AP American History, International Studies, again, Model UN, both semesters, AP Biology, AP Calculus BC, AP Spanish Language, Silk Screen, it was actually a really cool class, elective, private music lesson credits, again, um, chamber orchestra, health, and physical education. Oh, and by now you've probably seen um, a few like P's instead of A's or anything like that for the final grade. That's because for those classes, I took them on a pass-fail basis. So essentially you either get a P for passing or an F for fail. Um, so for those classes, I got a P for passing. And then finally for the 12th grade, uh, my last class schedule of high school, these are the courses that I took. And I took AP English 2, AP IPL 2, International Studies Honors. Um, I only took Model UN for one semester this year, or this past year. Physics Honors, AP Statistics, Calculus 3 Honors, Chamber Orchestra Honors, Health, CPR certifi Certification and Teen Stress Management, an elective, and Physical Education. So those are the courses and the final grades that I got in those classes. I don't really dwell on them too much just because, you know, I mean, there's not much I can say about that. It's just whatever grade you get, you get. So that was 
uh, basically what my transcript looked like um, from all four years of high school. Okay, so now for testing. Um, I did not take the ACT, I only took the SAT with essay. And for that, I took it in August of 2017, which is the summer before my junior year. And um, I took it only one time. I got a 1550 total with a 750 breakdown for the evidence-based reading and writing and an 800 for the math subsection. And then for the essay, I got a 21 out of 24. Then for the SAT subject tests, for some reason, I had the most trouble studying and getting good grades for these tests. I don't know why, but I ended up having to take quite a few quite often over the past four years. So just to go through um, all my scores over the years. In June of 2016, after my freshman year, I got a 720 on the biology molecular subject test. I then took the biology molecular test once again in June 2018, which was uh, after my junior year, and I got a 770. And then I took the chemistry test just once. I took it in June of 2017, which was after my sophomore year, and I got a 740, and I only took that once. I was fine with that score, so I just submitted that. And then also in June 2017, I took the mathematics uh, level two subject test and I got a 750 and so I wasn't too happy with that I took it again in August 2018 which was the summer uh, right before my senior year and I got an 800 so I ended up submitting that so the final three subject test scores that I ended up submitting were 800 for math level 2 770 for biology molecular and 740 for chemistry so those are the three subject tests and then just to throw in the PSAT, um, at my high school, all the sophomores and juniors are pretty much required to take it. So for my sophomore year, I got a 1450 with a breakdown of 700 in evidence-based reading and writing and 750 in math. And the PSAT is based out of a scale of 1520, I think is the highest score. And then in my junior year, I got a 1500 with a 740 in evidence-based reading and writing and a 760 in math. So with that score, I qualified for the National Merit Scholarship as a semi-finalist. Um, there's some sort of selection score index thing and I made it for my state, so I qualified for that. And then finally, for my AP scores, um, I took eight AP tests in total. So five in my junior year and then three in my senior year. So in my junior year, I took Biology, Calculus BC, English Language and Composition, and Spanish Language and Culture. And I got a 5 on biology, a 5 on calculus BC with a AB subscore of 5, um, 5 on English language and composition, and a 5 on Spanish language and culture. So with those 5 scores, I qualified for the AP Scholar with Distinction Award. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not too sure what that means, so I'll put up the description that I got from the College Board website about what that award uh means right here then for my senior year i took three ap tests u.s uh, government and politics statistics and english literature and composition and so for u.s gov i got a five statistics i got a five and english literature and composition i got a four so again i qualify for the ap scholar with distinction award and the national ap scholar award and here's what those words mean <laughs> Okay, so now for the activities that I submitted on the common application, you're allowed to submit 10 activities. And so the ones that I went with, um, and you're supposed to put them in order of importance to you. The first activity was field hockey. And so I played for junior varsity in the ninth grade. I played for both junior varsity and varsity in the 10th grade. Uh, I lettered for varsity in my junior year, and then I was vo voted um, varsity co-captain in my senior year. And so that was actually like a huge part of my high school career. Then for my second activity, I put down that I was senior class council president. Um, I'd only participated in class council my senior year, and that was when I was voted um, president. And so what that entailed for my school was that I essentially led fundraising efforts for my school's prom, the senior prom. And so um, I spent a lot of time with the class council, the executive board, raising money throughout the school year with various events. Um, and just coordinating all the efforts and planning 
to set up a really cool senior prom at the end of the school year. So then for my third activity, I was the Tri-M Music Honor Society president at my school. Um, I actually started off as a Tri-M liaison in my junior year, which is where I coordinated uh, communications between Tri-M and the other music club at my high school. Um, and then for my senior year, I was voted president. And so what we did was we went to various concerts and music events um, in our district throughout the school year to ask uh, the audience members and people there to donate money to the Give a Note Foundation. And we actually managed to raise, um, I think almost like $5,000 from this past school year alone. So that was really cool, really exciting. Then for my fourth activity, I was in Science Honor Society and I was a general writer um, and editor for the Cephid, which was a Science Honor Society magazine. Um, and then in my senior year, I was vice president slash uh, senior editor of the Cephid. So that was really cool. I was able to help create the uh, seasonal issues of the Cephid throughout the school year. For my fifth activity, I put down that I was the assistant editor in chief of our school newspaper, The Clarion. And in the 10th grade, I was a regular writer for The Clarion. And then the 11th grade, I became a section editor for entertainment. That's good. And then for the senior year, I became the assistant editor in chief. So it was really cool because I was able to like move up through the ranks and see um, in more detail just how much effort went into creating the monthly issues of the Clarion. So that was really cool and uh, a very fulfilling experience throughout my uh, high school career. Then for my sixth activity, I put down Model United Nations. Um, I've been in Model UN or MUN, uh, the way that we call it at our school. Uh, for all four years of high school, I went to the Rutgers Model UN Conference, National High School Model UN Conference, uh, and the North American Invitational Model UN Conference, uh, which was in George at Georgetown University. And so I went to those conferences uh, a couple of times over the years, and I won like three awards, but I never gaveled, so it wasn't like anything big. I only won like, oh, best position paper and most improved. So. Definitely not huge awards, but it was always a really fun experience and I've made a lot of cool friends out the country So I really liked doing that throughout high school. Then I volunteered at a local hospital I just did basic stuff like I discharged new moms and I helped with delivering equipment and such and I greeted visitors and led them to where they had to go and uh, labeled bottles in the bacteriology department. So really basic stuff like that. Oh, and that was throughout uh, sophomore, junior year, and a little bit of senior year. So mostly in the middle of high school. Then I was a student aide at uh, my local religious education classes. Mama? I have a video. Yes. <laughs> so I was a student aide for five years, 8th to 12th grade, but obviously I only put down 9th to 12th grade because that's all I could. Um, so I was a student aide. I helped with first and second graders, but mostly second graders was preparing for their first communion. So that was really cool because I actually went to the religious ed education classes there when I was younger. So I was able to become a student aide and help out with the classes, which is really cool. And of course the kids are so cute. Then I was a church altar server and leader. Um, I did that for all four years of high school. I basically helped with setting up, um, helped the priest set up math. So I just did that um, every once in a while. So I put that down. And then for my last activity, I put down that I tutored kids. Um, I've tutored for pretty much all the years of high school. I did second grade math, third grade math, fourth grade reading and writing, fifth grade reading and writing. And it was generally on the weekends, like mostly Saturdays where I kept like busy. Um, just helping out, you know, the kids with their studying. <laughs> and then there's um, an optional section, not really optional, but a section in the Common App where if you go to the Writing tab, and then at the bottom there's a tab that says Additional Information. Um, I just put down extra stuff that I did there. So I just put down that I played violin in this volunteer high school nonprofit group called Mockingbird Melody, where every once in a while we'll go to the um, to this senior home, this nursing home, and we'll play orchestral arrangements for them. And then also I was in National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, um, Spanish Honor Society, and English Honor Society. Um, I didn't have any exec board positions for any of them, but I was just a general member. And I also put down that I took private music lessons, of course, um, for violin. You saw that that showed up on my transcript, so I did that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the extracurricular activities. Sorry, there's like a bunch of stuff going on in the back. Like my mom's like getting dinner ready and 
I'm doing the laundry, so that's going on back there. So there's a lot of sounds, but bear with me, we're almost done. So here are the five realistic tips that I have for you high school students. Um, just some tips that I really put together based off of my own experiences in high school and that I feel like really helped me the most but are talked about the least when it comes to these kinds of like college advice, application advice, high school advice videos that I've seen on YouTube. Now the first tip I have for you is to get to know your counselor. Uh, your counselor is the person who's supposed to write the mandatory recommendation letter from your high school counselor, um, obviously. And it really pays off to get to know him or her just because it'll give him or her something more specific and unique to write about when it comes to your letter. Generally, um, from what I've heard, it seems that most counselors tend to write really generic letters, but when they really know you and they really know who you are as a person and a student, they're able to add more to the letter that makes it much more appealing to the people who are reading it. With my counselor, he was really cool, uh, and he was someone that I was able to just talk to anytime that I really wanted during the school year I could stop by and we would literally just talk about like what we did over the weekend what my classes are like I could complain about teachers <laughs> and he helped me make sure that I was really on top of it when it came to college applications and scheduling and such but like I said I was really lucky that I had someone that I actually genuinely liked and was able to um, talk to and trust throughout my high school years Second tip is be friendly and be kind. This is something that a lot of people obviously know and they're supposed to do, but they don't really do it um, or prioritize it as much as they should. And I found that this helps not only just because it makes me feel better about who I am as a person, but also because if you're someone who wants to do a lot of extracurricular activities, maybe clubs and sports and such, um, being kind and being friendly and being very likable, I guess, is something that helps whenever you want to maybe manage your time a little bit better and be able to attend various um, club meetings and such throughout the school year. So for example, say I had a sports practice at 2.30 and then I had a club meeting at the same time, but I knew that the club meeting will end by three and then my sports practice would go on until at least four o'clock. So what I would do was I would ask if I could go to my club meeting and leave just a little bit early and then get to my sports practice and I would ask my coach if I could come just a little bit later and Normally, I mean, whenever you ask these things a lot, which I genuinely had to, um, it does tend to add up and maybe you will get on your advisor's bad side and stuff like that. But the nicer you are, when you show that you're responsible, it just helps when you want to ask these favors from the advisors. Um, because what I found for me was that it they really let it slide every once in a while um, because I asked so nicely so just in general make that a personal point um, that you really aim to be kinder it's definitely something that you should be taking with you into college and beyond third tip give it a shot and what I mean by this is you literally never know what will happen unless you try and of course that is a pretty big cliche but what I found from my own experience so I didn't think that I was going to do field hockey um, and I actually joined by accident. I had walked into the interest meeting when I didn't mean to, and my best friend was actually there at the meeting. She's going to be playing field hockey this fall for the University of Pennsylvania, so really cool. I decided to join because she pulled me down into the meeting, um, and I honestly was really, really nervous about the idea of joining a sport because it wasn't really something I'd planned on, but then I gave it a shot and it ended up becoming my biggest extracurricular commitment. So you really just don't know what's going to happen um, unless you embrace those kind of out of the blue opportunities that come up every so often in high school. Four, keep track of everything you do. And something that I did was in my bullet journal, I would always keep track of like special events and stuff like that. So I had a page I called favorite memories from like junior year, senior year. And I'll just jot down like little memos. Um, it was really just a bulleted list of things that happened and the dates that they happened. And at the end of the school year, I'll be able to look back and see like random moments I wouldn't have remembered otherwise. That helps not only to Really just keep track of those memories that you want to hold on to whenever it comes to high school and things like that. But also whenever you're writing your college essays, you never know when those small moments will actually come into play. And then finally, the fifth tip I have for you is it's okay to fail. 
I know how crazy it looks whenever you see like all of these resumes and um, all these activities that you see these like Ivy League students um, participate in, but I guarantee every single one of them has failed majorly throughout their life. And you know, if they haven't, then it's coming up. I don't know what to tell you. I tried to start a girls empowerment club at my school and I was really, really excited about the possibility of it, um, but it failed. They shot it down, administration. And it was kind of embarrassing because I had been like, you know, teased about it by like people at my school. And so I thought it was like really embarrassing that I didn't get to start this club because I had always heard like, you know, you have to start a club to get into these like top schools or you have to start a nonprofit or something like that. But I didn't, I didn't, I really didn't. I also tried out for the National Honor Society president position in my uh, junior year to be president in my senior year. And I didn't get the position and I was really sad about it. But then I ended up going for class council president and I somehow got it. You just never know. Um, you have to take everything in stride whenever um, something like that happens in your life. And the biggest thing is to just keep moving forward. So yeah, it's okay to fail because you never know where it'll take you. So that's pretty much it for all the tips that I have and then also the extracurriculars and scores and grades and stuff like that. I hope this video was worthwhile for you, especially all you people who have been asking for it for so long. Um, I do have just a few more videos coming up in my little back to school series. But again, good luck to all of you who are going back to school, whether it's high school or college or middle school. I hope you guys go into this new school year with an open mind and determination to really do well. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I feel like I've been working on this video for ages. Oh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I never actually mentioned it, but all my social media links are in the description below. So if you want to follow me there, especially because I will be moving in, in uh, to college in around two weeks. So if you want to keep up with my adventures, I post most often on Instagram. So you can check that out in the description. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.